So this week, we're talking about personalities in the home chem extravaganza that we're doing on every Monday. And today, I would like to introduce you to a personality that I think is really fascinating and captivating. I follow this guy on Instagram and on YouTube, and you can too. Uh, but first, before I introduce him, I just wanna give you a trigger warning because there is gonna be foul language. There are gonna be foul subject matters coming up. We're gonna be looking at foul houses. Here is my friend, Corey Heider. I think if that's a question, if I like that, I do like that. Carpeted motherfucking walls in the bathroom. Oh my God. Just to set the stage of how perfect the way that his personality and his, like the things that he is seeing out there mesh and why this is such an amazing window into this universe that I think we should all be looking at when we're talking about the science of homes. Let me just show you a couple of clips from his channel. This is exactly how you should not live, okay? I mean, A for effort for brushing all the dog shit into a pile. But, um, you, oh my God, you got to clean your, what? you got to clean your fridge. Or at least not, just have like a milk diet. Just a normal basement, right? Nothing weird. Uh-huh. That's how they get you. And we are on our way to the Church of the Crystal Methodists because I have no fucking idea what I'm looking at here. This gutter runs through the house and somehow it, there's water coming out of it. Okay guys, so this one's fucked up. I had to drill through this lock to get in here. You know the economy is absolutely terrible when a fucking church gets foreclosed on. Good God almighty. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that. The whole floor, this is an unsafe environment. I'm like, wow, look at that beautiful fucking epoxy flooring. And then I see the can of paint in it. And I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at here? Bro, it is all slimy swamp water. That's all slimy, slimy swamp water. Bro, they, they are inviting me to this like influencer thing. And I'm like, no, I don't consider myself an influencer at all. Like this is a complete accident. It's just a train wreck that people can't look away from. I'm supposed to like create content on it, but I was like, my content's like dead animals and shit and like v this the most fucked up shit, right? Cause it's like, I don't <laughs> it know. It's just Corey, how in the world did you get into this w world of seeing these houses that are like, I don't think anybody should be seeing this stuff. Well, that is a interesting question. Um, I actually worked as a car salesman before the pandemic the pandemic happened i got displaced you know the whole auto industry um a lot of things run short so i didn't have a job for six months and i'm not the kind of person that could sit still and my one of my really good friends actually owns this company where they do this thing and he was like well you know you keep saying you're bored come do it and i knew what he did i knew it was bad i've heard you know i heard like Phew, the nightmare fuel right and I was like, man, it's like when you say you're bored and your mom's like, hey, why don't you wash the dishes then? It's like, that's not exactly what I meant. Holy fucking potatoes, guys. This is what happens when you let dogs shit and piss all over the fucking floor until it literally rots the floor out like total holes right here. This is the Mountain Dew house for anybody who cares. Holes filled with, filled with Mountain Dew. And that's where the pile of shit was. Literally ate a hole in the fucking floor. Doesn't that look relaxing, huh? The very first time I helped him, I did it for free. Believe it or not, I did it out of straight boredom. And I will probably never do that again. Uh, it was a mistake. There was a, a four by eight foot wall filled with bees. And it attacked the whole group of guys. Um, but that's how I got into it. I got displaced during a pandemic and fell ass backwards into it. This is uh, the first time in my life I've had man hands. I'm a desk <laughs> jockey. That's it. Like, I was a desk jockey. I was soft. You know what I mean? I was about 120 pounds heavier than I am now, like, out of shape. And everyone there is, like, seasoned contractors on roof. And I'm just like, man, like, when's lunch? You know? Like, what are we doing here? This is crazy. Okay, so in the year I've been posting shit on this account, I have been waiting for the motherfucking day I get to prove how beautiful moldy spiders are. Look at these prime examples of moldy spiders. And I love them. I think, look at that motherfucker. So terrible 
uh, with the moldy spiders and all of the, the different things that you find. But the thing that is so, so important to me is seeing the disaster that can become a house because we've spent an entire season on home diagnosis exploring over 11 episodes what disasters on like a big scale look like. And I think that looking at disasters on a small scale is super, super important because I think a lot of people think their house is bad or they think, you know, it's like we just, our perspective is really um, untuned to the things that you are seeing. And so wh where do you find these houses? Why are they so messed up in your opinion and also like factually? Is it, are people doing this on purpose to these places? It's hard to say because they don't exactly tell us. It's never part of the paperwork, but they're all bank owned properties. Okay, for one reason or another. I can't get into too much detail about that, but um, for one reason or another, they have been become vacant, either jail, death, institution, some you know, mental illness. They just up in Springtown for no reason. Or, um, uh, you know, they just they just can't pay the bills, whatever the case is. So they have to leave. And um, I, I don't know if it's just there is just that many people out there that live like that. And we don't know because it's always behind closed doors and you just don't know. We just assume that, you know, people are like us because it makes us feel better. So first and foremost, what I noticed is this crazy kitchen, right? Because this is just like usually not kitchen decor. I'm used to like fucking apples and roosters and what have you, right? And then we come into this, the darkest living room you could ever imagine, right? And I'm like, oh, a tool bag, right? I wonder if there's any good motherfucking tool. No, it's another fucking diddle satchel. It's another grade A moldy butt plug having motherfucking diddle satchel with the tie, the lube, the condom. And it's just like, why can't I get a break? Why is it never not a diddle satchel? Let's go on an HD tour of fucking horror. Okay, we got the classic. Oh my fucking God, the TV's on. Well, that's fucking unsettling. That's the first time that's ever happened. Like, we start putting things together, like the Mountain Dew, the, the quote-unquote diddlers, and just like things that, that have a place in each one of these houses. There's common things traits a personality like a, a a profile you're building you have drug addicts to straight drug addiction gone out of control you know what i mean to where you just stop caring and things start falling apart around you you start selling stuff and then well first thing that happens is let's say the garbage bill right they stop so they stop collecting garbage well now what do you do with it you know what i mean just leave it in the yard next thing you the the the, the sewage okay so now they're just you know filling up the 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 stack with raw feces or in the floor or in buckets or whatever they decide to do with it. Um, then the next thing, the, the the power goes out. So now they're living in the dark, maybe setting fires and pianos or just whatever like crazy behavior that just starts becoming normal. This feral lifestyle, you know what I mean? And just piles of garbage that you live in like rodents. I mean, honestly, because you, I see ro rats in these houses that live just like the people did before they left. And, it just really, I mean, it opens your eyes. It's, it's a, it seems like a, I, again, I don't know if it's just from my perspective, but it seems like a big demographic, doesn't it? We got invited to a house, but there's only half of it still here. So, man, it's weird. They still got all the mattresses though. And a little entertainment for when you have guests over. This is nice, guys. A little guest chair with the scared cat on it. I always get asked in the comment if the houses are always that bad. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, look at these people. They just left fucking granite laying everywhere. Fucking disgusting. I've been, I've been in this house for 35 minutes and I literally haven't seen not one piece of fucking fecal matter. And it's, I, I, I don't know how people can live like this. Honestly, I mean, sometimes it's hard to pull out that camera when, you know, you see what I'm dealing with. And it, it is hard as you would imagine to be like, OK, let me do something funny right now while I'm standing on a pile of garbage smelling the worst thing that you can imagine. And my just so you know, I get this question all the time. What's the worst smell? Like, what's the thing you can't take? Rotten meat was first. Right. That's the, obviously no one likes that. There is a smell that I feel like a lot of people are unfamiliar with when there are so many bugs in a place. That there's generations of bugs on top of generations of bugs. And that, like, bug genocide has a certain smell to it. To where it's like, 
it's not poop it's not mold it's bug corpses just generations of them until they feast off all the garbage that's left it's it gets wild i mean you see okay here we go on another safari of mold you guys are gonna love this one so this door right i don't know if like it's hairy okay the door is hairy oh we got carpeted stairs in the basement dead giveaway she gonna be moldy oh it looks like this whole oh my god i see what he's saying that's not paint dog that is all mold the rusty cast iron Whew. damn oh jesus yeah this is probably not safe to breathe look at the little mask on the mirror that's creepy Oh, this is all actively wet. Let me open the door real quick. Oh, man. Well, there's a problem right there. She got a leaky toilet. We're going to go have to go ahead and have to fix that. Little porcelain village. Damn, dude. This shit is wild. There's another fuzzy door. Ugh. Wow. That mold looks like an unlocked character on motherfucking Mortal Kombat, huh? Damn. Oh. Actually, when I started doing what I do, I started out in weatherization, which is a low-income program. For those of you who worked in weatherization or were energy auditors for those kind of programs, you might remember the smell, which I'm sure Corey smells all the time, dogs that have been allowed to poop inside, and that poop has become so old that it gets like, it doesn't smell like poop anymore. It smells like something different. It's kind of this dark, really, it's like a very dark, earthy smell. And many of you right now are being like, ah, thank you very much for bringing that back to me. Um, and I think that to me, what that drove me to do is to get out of that and start doing what I do now because I felt so sad. Like I, I would go into these basements and go into the dankest corner of a basement and find a bed knowing that like somebody had, this was normal. Like you said, the normalization of it. So how, I mean, I think that I get how you not, how you don't get sad because you're using like very flowery language and like having fun with it. But do you get, what, what bothers you about your job? Um, obviously children. Um, that's a big thing. We never really discuss. I never really cover it because, you know, I keep it light and airy. Um, but the, the children that have to live in these situations, you know what I mean? The dark, gritty, you'll go through a house and it'll look uh, what you're familiar with if you watch my content, but just, you know, hoarding and garbage and, and feces and, and, and filth and, and mold. And then you'll get to a back corner and there'll be one bedroom. And it, it, the door is always closed for some reason. You always got to open that door. And it's the only clean room in the house. The car, like the carpet goes from dirt to clean. And it's usually a child's room. And you could just kind of see how they try to really, as hard as they can, block themselves away from that dark world that was just outside the door that, you know, they don't have control over. They don't. I, I do, I'm good at compartmentalizing that. You know what I mean? Uh, for one reason or another, it's just, you know, I know it's not my fault. I There's nothing I could do to fix it or change it you know um i'm just there to do a job and it's not like you know i put them out on the street or anything like that but well and by the time you you pull into the scene the story already happened right all of the tragedy already happens in the past years typically at least a year uh i've seen it upwards of 13 years a house has been vacant i mean sometimes it, when you pull up on it it is honestly like like a, like an aztec ruin so I know why I follow you. I am on Instagram for entertainment. That is how I like tune out at the end of the day. I look at funny memes and stuff like that. And you are part of the funny. It just takes me out of my life. And I'm wondering what kind of story do you think you're telling? 100% this is observe and report. This is observe and report from my perspective because I don't quite understand it and I never know. Can I tell you egg trays was an accident? Okay. I don't know what his favorite holiday was, but just in case you ever needed a double egg tray, we got you, dog, all day. That was probably the most expensive one I'll hear about in the comments. My man got deviled egg trays for deviled egg days. Oh, you thought we were out? Oh, no. 
Oh, no. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I did not think the deviled egg video was going to take off as big as it did. I really appreciate you guys. Here's the patchwork carpet for anyone who cares. My man doesn't have a fucking fork. He doesn't have a bowl. He doesn't have a plate. He doesn't have a teacup. It is literally all deviled egg trays. Okay, so show us, show us your, show us your gross stuff. That you guys, do you see these guys as kind of like artifacts, or are they souvenirs, or do they remind you? Like, I, well, you you want me to open up emotionally? I don't know. This, <laughs> I tell you what, someone tried to buy this off me. So this is very important, more important to me than money. Somebody offered me, I think, one hundred and sixty-five dollars for this, and I said no. This is too important to me, and it's um. <laughs> It says, and I don't even drink, but it says right here, alcohol will solve any problem. And it, it, that that hides this thing. And then, you know, of course, egg trays, which I am synonymous with. I will destroy deviled eggs by the gross. That's a dozen dozen, for, if you didn't know. But um, <laughs> it's a good <laughs> Is that from the house? And was there only one yes. house with the egg trays? Or are egg trays like a ubiquitous no, no. thing like the Mountain Dew? That was one house. And I don't think you will ever find another fucking egg tray in the Tri-County area because he had every single one of them. That was why I thought that was my big ticket out of the hood. I'm not going to lie. I thought I was going <laughs> to ride those egg trays straight to the top. So I'm starting to put a whole conspiracy together, right? I'm at the moldy ceiling fan house. And I look over as I'm leaving. And I see a motherfucking deviled egg tray on the floor. Bro, if a can of Mountain Dew pops up in this house, I'm leaving. That's the three signs of the apocalypse. This baby came from one of the worst houses I have ever seen in my life. She was pregnant, living with like coyotes and bears in the woods of this. Dude, this house was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. I have a heart, you know? Yes, Corbett, it has become an absolute problem. And I am almost the houses I go to at this point, you know? Because if I take 1% of each house I go to, it's only 100 houses later, I'm 100% house. You know what I mean? Thank you for making it funny because mm -hmm. there's a there is a universe where, like, it's not funny. It's yeah. really, really sad. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate being able to, like, see that it is really screwed up and that normal people, like, you know, I like to remind myself, I'm only a few steps away from being homeless and destitute. If a yes. few, if few key things in my life were to like go really, really wrong, I, you know, that's where I would be too. So Corbett, I, we have the exact same ideology on that. That's how I look at it. I always say I'm like seven bad decisions away from being right here, right here. And I have, uh, my, the, I found a letter from the mortgage company that I have at a house, you know, to a different person, obviously saying, Hey, you know, we understand that you can't pay it and sometimes it's hard. And just like reading that gave me anxiety because it was like from my mortgage company. It was the letter saying, hey, you're way behind. We've got to figure something out. And I was like, my God, you know, that could be me. I mean, we don't, I, I mean, no one really knows like me very much because like I say, half of it is a character that you see out there. You know, I, I, I dumb down and I'm just, I love the white trash Appalachia aspect. Let's get it. You know what I mean? I love that shit. But um, I grew up, I grew up a little rough. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up in a nice neighborhood. I didn't go to the best school. I didn't have the clean cut friends. I didn't have every opportunity. You know what I mean? It was, um, so I see the grit. I lived the grit. You know what I mean? I did my time in the grit. And I think that's why I can look at it and say, you know, you can recover. You can, you can live the grit and be graceful. And I think that gives people an advantage. Do you know what I mean? To be able to do that. Because when the shit hits the fan in your new life that is better, you'd be like, hey, you know what I mean? I've been covered in shit plenty of times. They say no big thing. Let's keep it rolling. Meanwhile, the person that has never been in these adversities, these situations, you know what I mean? They have been sheltered or guided or what you would want someone to live, how you would want someone to live, theoretically, right? But now the shit hits the fan because the world's fucking out there. Whether you're protected from it or not, okay? The world is here. It's not good. It doesn't necessarily care about you, unfortunately. You know what I mean? There are people that do, but the world as a whole does not prefer you, okay? And that, that's going to happen. That's going to show itself one day. And if you're not ready for it, that can fucking break you. So how can people follow you? Um, well, you can follow me on Instagram uh, at 
what Hyder Corey, if you could put a link on that, I don't know. It's weird. It's my last name uh, rhymes with spider. Uh, or you could follow me on YouTube, which is a new thing for me. I put blue collar Corey, but some people say that comes up as a country star. I don't know how it works, to be honest with you. And I'm so new at this. Honest to God, I'm so new at this. I don't have a cameraman. I've never been coached on what to say. I literally pull, I'm like, I get into motion. I pull out my phone and I go, I'm like, look at this. Please, 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 please. As a fellow creator, you're amazing. Thank Don't you. change. Like keep, do, you have found the secret recipe. And by the way, just to reiterate, I, something I say all the time, there is no recipe, but you have found a secret like stash of ingredients that somehow combines into this magical, perfect thing. So please like keep doing what you're doing. You don't sure. need a cameraman. You don't need special editing. Do exactly what you're doing. Like we okay. love it. So, oh my God, it's so gooey guys. You get going down the steps. Marcus, look out, Pelegro. Pelegro. Oh my God, damn dude. Maybe you've never seen that. Maybe I could show that to you. The day I found the doll in the house, I was like, I know they want to see this. I've never seen anything like this. That was a crazy day. I had to throw that thing out in the street. And then I had to throw that thing in a U-Haul. Then I had to take that thing to the dump and dump it in a trash pile while a guy in an excavator pushes it the whole time making eye contact with me thinking that was mine, that I am refusing to the dump because I'm done with it. The rest of us will come to your defense. So yes, people are watching. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Please keep reporting, observing and reporting. Um, you guys make up your own minds about Corey. Go and follow him right away on those two platforms. Uh, links below, like like mentioned. Corey, thank you so much. Next time I'm in Pittsburgh, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna buy you a drink, and we're gonna go out and have oh, this. Yeah. Um, that'd Show be fun. me. I so. swear, I I won't take you in any of the houses. I'll keep it clean. I'll keep you know. <laughs> I might ask you to take me to some houses. You but want okay. to? I've anyway. got some addresses in my back pocket. You guys, make sure that you comment below if you have other things to add about videos that you've seen from Corey. If you already follow him, please do like and subscribe. Tune in next time.